Now I'm going to show you the gluteal region. Here is the gluteal region. And it's between the iliac crest. As you see, here is the iliac crest and gluteal fold. Here is called gluteal fold. It's a fold in the skin. Maybe it's not visible here. And yeah, you can see a big muscle here, which is called gluteus maximus gluteus maximus and as you see this muscle attaches to the sacrum here is the sacrum and it, it also attaches to the hip bone gluteal surface of the hip bone I will show you here you see imagine that here is the sacrum here is the hip bone and here is the gluteus maximus it attaches here the sacrum and the hip bone on the gluteal surface of the hip we have three line posterior gluteal line in anterior gluteal line and inferior gluteal line three lines starting from this greater sciatic knot and goes up and the gluteal muscles attaches between these three lines so Imagine that here is the posterior gluteal line and the gluteus muscle attaches behind the posterior gluteal line here and it also attaches the sacrum and some ligaments here it attaches also the ligaments here that I can show you here in this model here we have some ligaments here is the sacral tuberosity between sacrum and the shield tuberosity sacral tuberus and here is the sacrospinous between sacrum and the scalar spine. It's all, I mean, gluteus maximus attaches here, hip, sacrum, and this ligament. And then its, it's fiber goes down, and they have, a, they have oblique fibers, and they most of the fibers attaches here, this iliotibial tract. It's the thickening of the deep fascia around the uh, thigh. It's starting from the ilia and goes down and attaches to the tibia. That's why it is called iliotibial tract. So most of the fibers of the gluteus maximus, as you see, attaches the iliotibial tract but some of the deep muscle fibers attaches to the femur they are coming from here and attaches here here you can see a rough area which is called gluteal surface or gluteal tuberosity sorry so the deep muscle fibers of the gluteus muscles gluteus muscle attaches to the gluteal tuberosity so it acts like a lid. I mean, it covers the muscles deep to the gluteus muscles. If I take it away, you can see other muscles here. Here is the gluteus medius, and deep to the gluteus medius, you can see gluteus minimus. So they attach to the gluteal surface here. Gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. I mean gluteus medius. I will show you on the monitor. Sorry. Oh, here. You see here? Gluteus medius attaches to the gluteal surface between the posterior and anterior line gluteal line and gluteus minimus attaches between the anterior and inferior gluteal line so gluteus medius as you see it's coming from here and minimus coming from here and they both come down and attaches to the uh, lateral aspect and anterior aspect of the greater trochanter here is the greater trochanter, medius, lateral aspect, minimus, anterior aspect. 
like this. So we have three gluteus, gluteus maximus, medius, and minimus. We also have another muscle, small muscle here. It is called tensor fascia lata. Here is the tensor fascia lata. Uh, as its name suggests, it makes a tension on the fascia lata. What is the fascia lata? Fascia lata is a deep fascia surrounding the all muscles of the thigh. So, as you see, it attaches to this part of the hip bone between the pubic tubercle and ASIS and it goes down and attaches to this thickening of the theory of the fascia, sorry, uh, fascia lata, which is called iliotibial tract. So two muscles are attaching to the iliotibial tract. The first one I showed you is gluteus maximus. The second one is tensor fascia lata. These two muscles attaching to the iliotibial tract you see here. So what is the action of the these three muscles? Tensor fascia lata, gluteus medius and gluteus minimus. These are called the lateral part of the gluteal region. Here is the lateral part. So as I showed you the gluteus medius and minimus attaching to the, the lateral and anterior aspects. They are coming from the hip and attaching to the lateral anterior aspect. So they can do abduction of the hip. This, they can do abduction. They can take the femur away at the hip joint. And they can also maybe the anterior fiber crossing the hip joint anteriorly. They can also medially rotate the hip joints. You see here in functions, the monitor. Gluteus minimus, gluteus medius, and tensor fascia lata, three muscles from the lateral part of the gluteal region. They can do abduction of the hip joint. All three muscles of the lateral part of the gluteal region can do abduction of the hip, hip joint. But the anterior fiber of these muscles can also do medial rotation. You see here, anterior fiber, medially rotate the hip joint. Abduction is the main action, the medial rotation is the accessory action. The posterior part of the gluteal region, the first muscle I showed you is the gluteus maximus. If I take the gluteus muscle away, deep to the gluteus maximus, you can see six small muscles. The important one is located at the top, which is called piriformis. Piri means pear shaped. It's a pear shape. Piriformis. Piriformis, it's coming from here inside the pelvis. Here. Can you see? Here is inside the pelvis. You see the yellow one is the sacral plexus nerves and the red one is the branches of the internal blue um, iliac arteries. But you see deep to these vessels and nerves, you see the muscle which is called piriformis. So piriformis is coming from the anterior surface of the sacrum and it passes through this uh, um, great or lesser sciatic knot and then reach to this great as well. I will show you the imagine that this is the muscle fiber of the gluteus sorry piriformis it's it attaches I will show you anteriorly it attaches to the anterior surface of the sacrum and crosses here here lesser sciatic notch like this 
and then it reaches see attaches to the anterior surface of the sacrum crosses the lesser sciatic foramen and finally it attaches to the greater trochanter like this from sacrum to the greater trochanter passing through this lesser sciatic foramen here is the piriformis it's a, an important key muscle of this region why because some structures some arteries and vessels pop out above and below the piriformis you see here superior gluteal inferior gluteal vessels and nerves and the important one is the sciatic nerve it's coming out below the piriformis so the piriformis is a reference muscle or key muscle of this region uh, below the piriformis we have some small muscles this one is obturator internus here is the obturator internus as its name suggests it's coming from the obturator foramen and again attaches to the greater trochanter like the piriformis so i'll show you again the direction of the muscle fibers here is the obturator foramen can you see the obturator foramen here here is the obturator foramen and obturator internus coming from the medial side of the uh, obturator foramen and then it passes through here this lesser sciatic notch and attaches it makes an l-shaped muscle fiber coming from the medial side of the obturator foramen and passes through the lesser sciatic notch and attaches to the greater trochanter. Piriform is coming from here and passes through the greater sciatic. Now, I made a mistake in the last part. I said that lesser sciatic, but piriform is coming from the greater sciatic notch. It's coming from the anterior aspect of the sacrum, passes through the greater sciatic notch and attaches to the greater trochanter. But the this one, obturator internus attaches to the medial aspect of the obturator foramen and passes through this lesser sciatic foramen and attaches to the greater uh, greater trochanter above and below the obturator internus here is the obturator internus above and below the obturator internus we have gimli uh, superior gimli and inferior gimlus superior gimlus inferior gimlus and they are coming from the this part superior gimli coming from this ischial spine inferior is coming from here below the lesser sciatic knots and they get to the greater trochanter so here is the superior gemellus, inferior gemellus between the obturator internus. Uh, below the inferior gemellus, we have a quadrangular shaped muscle which is called quadratus femoris. Quadratus femoris. Again, it's coming from here, ischial body, and then attaches here this tubercle on the intertrochanter tab, quadratus tubercle. It's located here. Here. So, as a quick recap, we have piriformis, superior gemellus, obturator internus, inferior gemellus, and quadratus femoris. We also have obturator externus. You cannot see in this anatomy model because it is deep to this muscle. If you remove this quadratus femoris deep to this muscle, we have obturator externus. As its name suggests, it's coming from the outside of the obturator foramen. Here is the obturator foramen. From the inside, here is the obturator foramen. You see, obturator foramen. From the outside, we have the origin of the obturator externus. From the inside, we have the origin of the obturator internus. Obturator internus passing through this lesser sciatic notch and attaches here. But obturator externus 
come from here and attaches to greater trochanter. All muscles of this this part attaches to the greater trochanter. Preformis, superior gemellus, obturator internus, inferior gemellus, obturator externus, and quadrats moris. So all of them attaches to the medial aspect of the greater trochanter. So when they are attaching to the medial aspect of the greater trochanter, they can do this action, I mean lateral rotation of the hip joints. Obturate, sorry, gluteus, medius, and minimus can do abduction. Also, they can do medial rotation. But these muscles, these six muscles, can do lateral rotation. So, obturator internus, sorry, gluteus, medius, minimus, tensor, fascia, lata can do medial rotation. And these six muscles can do lateral rotation. And what is the action of the gluteus maximus? Gluteus maximus is so strong and it crosses the hip joint posteriorly. It can do extension. The main action is the extension of the hip joints. But it can also help these six muscles and can do lateral rotation. So the accessory action is lateral rotation. Extension and lateral rotation of the hip joints. Thank you.